Alright, hello guys, how's it going? In today's video, we need to talk once more about the tropics. We have Larry out there. We're not going to talk too much about Larry because it's going to be pretty minimal as far as impacts go. But we have our invest in the Gulf that's going to move through the southeast and possibly up the east coast, bringing some possible flooding and some windiness. But I'm more worried about the flooding than the windiness for sure because of how weak this storm really is. We're going to talk about all those things within this video. <music> Now be sure to smash that like button, leave a comment down below, and subscribe for more weather related content. For today's comment of the day, I want to know, do you think that this invest in the Gulf will end up becoming a tropical depression, or do you think it will just stay a disturbance? Let me know in the comments down below, and I'll be picking one of those for tomorrow's video. Let's get straight into this video, and we're taking a look at the five day graphical tropical weather outlook. We see Larry is to the southeast of Bermuda, dramatically weakening. We will take a look at some satellite imagery in a moment, and you're going to be able to tell that it has weakened quite a bit, which is really, really good news. We have a 50% chance of development there for that one in the Gulf now, so that's a 50-50 shot of becoming a tropical depression or not becoming a tropical depression. We'll zoom in on that in just a second, but you could tell that it's going to track over Florida into the south offshore of the southeast, and it could curve a little bit up the coast, and that could bring you flooding way up the coast like shows like it shows in the thumbnail uh that is what the models are trending at we'll show some some rainfall forecasts later on in the video here is a more specific look at this individual system and again a 50 percent chance within the next five days of that development in five days from now it will be offshore of the southeast coast but the two-day graphical tropical weather outlook also has a 50 percent chance which is basically the time it has to approach florida and then eventually cross over florida that would be like day three four after it's over florida so it is a 50 shot of becoming a tropical depression before even hitting Florida, uh, which is pretty interesting. And I'm, I'm sure it has a chance of staying a tropical depression as it crosses over Florida as well, offshore of the southeast. Here's the cone forecast for Hurricane Larry, and this one will hit Newfoundland. I'm fairly confident of that as a hurricane, which is the most impactful thing this one is going to do. And then it's basically going to skirt the eastern coast there of Greenland as a kind of post-tropical uh, storm there uh, and, and really bring some rainfall, some windiness potentially for you guys. But here's the satellite imagery and this one is getting eaten up. It's still technically a category three, but this is one of the least healthy looking category threes I've ever seen. And I think it's going to dramatically weaken over the next few days before it even has a chance to impact Bermuda or sorry, not Bermuda, Newfoundland. Uh, and I think it would be a category one probably by that point, which is also very good news considering it was, you know, a major, a major hurricane all of this time to see it weaken like that before hitting land is very, very good news. Speaking of the intensity, what we're going to do in a moment is take a look at the intensity guidance, the spaghetti model guidance, and then we're going to start talking about our one in the Gulf. We'll take a look at the spaghetti model guidance, the European probability of tropical depression and then the satellite imagery, the intensity guidance, and then rainfall and wind as well. And we're even going to talk about a little bit of a severe weather threat for the East Coast today at the very tail end of this video. So all those things are coming up in just a moment. All right, now here we are taking a look at that intensity guidance for Larry. And as you can see, this one will, uh, it, is, it is pretty much a weaker category three at this point. There's no such thing as a weak category three, but it is on the weaker side of a category three. It'll likely be a category two within the next 48 hours, if not, you know, 60 hours or so, and then a category one by hour 72. So within the next three days, we should see this one go down two categories, and it might even be a tropical storm by the time we're taking a look at about 84 hours from now, which is very good news to see it expected to weaken uh, that dramatically. In about 72 hours, it'll be hitting Newfoundland or just offshore of Newfoundland. So that's why I said a category one likely, because that's where we see it the intensity guidance go down to that category one status. Uh, let's take a look at that spaghetti model guidance. And again, hour 72, you can see the little tiny numbers there next to Newfoundland, 72. That indicates that 72 hours from now, these models indicate that that's when it will be hitting around there. And then hours 120 around Greenland, which it would hardly be a tropical storm by that point. It might not even be. Here is the spaghetti model guidance here for the one in the Gulf. And as we can see, it's expected to cross over Florida and then kind of hover around the East Coast, some much closer and even on shore of the East Coast and then some much further away. That's why this one is so difficult to track. Probability of tropical depression here, we have a 60 to 70% chance 
according to the European model here as it's crossing over Florida. So there is a good chance, but probability of tropical storm is around zero to 10% chance. So you see it dramatically go down. So there is a chance of a tropical depression, but hardly a chance of a tropical storm, which is again, very good news. This does have a more organized area of thunderstorms than originally anticipated. By this point, here is that satellite imagery. And as you can see, uh, there's some very tall clouds in there and they're actually pretty widespread. This could only continue to develop as this one a little bit intensifies, possibly again towards a tropical depression. That would lead towards a more impactful storm, obviously, and a little bit more widespread with those very tall thunder clouds uh, and a little bit of wind and some flooding. That risk will only go up the more intense this one continues to get. Here is the intensity guidance. And as you can see, uh, a majority of these take this up towards about 30 knots. Uh, but hardly any of these cross over into the tropical storm status. We see two doing it. The ship model does that at about hours 48 or 60. And then we see the NNIC model eventually doing it by hours like 120. I don't even know where it would be by that point. So that model is kind of uh, a little bit of an outlier, obviously, by this point. Now, what we're going to do in a moment is take a look at some of those impacts. We're going to take a look at the total rainfall in a moment where there is a flooding risk. And then we're going to take a look at the total winds as well. And then we're going to take a little bit of an extended look at that severe weather threat throughout the day today for the East Coast as a bonus. All right, now here is that total rainfall. And the flooding risk isn't going to be widespread, which is really good news. Uh, we mostly are taking a look at Florida, Georgia, taking a look at those one inch plus amounts there in the yellows and oranges. And in a quick amount of time, that can lead to some spotty flooding. We also see some spotty areas along the East Coast. Again, North Carolina getting some one inch plus amounts, uh, Maryland, New Jersey, Long Island, and then a lot of New England getting two inches plus on this model, the European model. We're all having our fingers crossed, obviously, that New Jersey, Pennsylvania, and New York do not feel any sort of flooding impacts from this one after what they just had to deal with with Ida. But obviously, uh, they received far, far more rainfall than this. The only reason I'm concerned is because that rainfall still hasn't completely subsided, obviously. So even a little bit of rain uh, could create bigger problems than it typically would with that much saturation. Uh, and obviously, with the drainage systems being piled up with water, obviously, uh, there's some impacts that we could watch out for, but hopefully they're not going to feel the brunt of that. I think the biggest risk looking at this is New England. And then obviously, right where this storm or depression or disturbance comes on shore there on the panhandle. Now here's the total accumulated winds and it's not too bad. There's some 30 mile per hour plus gusts expected in the green areas there. So a little bit for Florida and then a little bit for New England. I think the New England one is not is not associated with this system. A lot of the rainfall is separate from the system, but overall the East Coast can expect some flooding risk regardless of if it's from this tropical disturbance or not. And typically a low pressure system being in the Atlantic enhances that rainfall elsewhere uh, and, and some nearby areas as well. So I think it's all related to this tropical system moving through, but there is also that cold front coming through, which could lead to a lot of this as well. So there's multiple things going on over the next week or so that are going to lead to this rainfall. Now here's that severe weather risk. Again, uh, we have a marginal risk here from South Carolina all the way up through Vermont and New Hampshire. Love that area. You guys have heard me say that multiple times. We also have a marginal risk for Arizona, Texas, and then one there for the Florida Panhandle and a little bit of Georgia. So we have multiple areas of some very isolated severe weather expected, but that slight risk up from DC all the way up through uh, Vermont there, that is going to be the main area of concern. As we take a look at the day one wind outlook, we have a 5% chance within 25 miles of a given location within all the green regions, which we have four of them, by the way, and then a 15% chance there within the yellow region. That is our slight risk region. For the hail outlook, we only have a 5% chance within 25 miles of a given location within these three green regions. And then the tornado risk, which I'm slightly concerned about, and obviously this is a very similar region to where we saw uh, the tornado basically a uh, major tornado event uh, for this region, although this is a much, much lesser risk, which is good news, but it still is a risk uh, nevertheless. Within the green region, we have a 2% chance of tornadoes within 25 miles of a given location. And then the brown region, a 5% chance. Uh, we're just going to want to be mindful of this, but we had a much larger risk on that day where we had the really bad uh, tornadoes here for this similar region. So it doesn't look to be as bad as that, obviously, which is really, really good news. For today's confidence tab, we have a five out of six. Uh, we feel like this storm is imminent. The impacts seem to be uh, mostly minimal, but given what has happened over the most recent uh, weather events, 
we feel like this could lead to some worse impacts than it typically would, uh, but my confidence is overall pretty high. For today's comment of the day, I asked you guys yesterday, do you think we will have a La Nina winner or a neutral Enso winner? And Ethan Gillespie said, I think we will have a neutral Enso due to the recent data in that trend. And, and even the National Weather Service and NOAA are on board with that, the Climate Prediction Center. Uh, they're starting to come on board with that neutral Enso idea because of the recent model guidance and the recent trends as well. For today's patron highlight of the day, which by the way, I'm going to be updating these names once we get the fall channel art. I've been seeing a lot of people say, you know, I'm, I've been a platinum patron. I haven't been added to the list. I'm going to do one huge update once uh, we get the fall channel art, which will likely be uh, October 1st, if not around then. So very, very soon, less than a month, we will be updating that. So rest assured. But our platinum patrons today is John Benbenek, James Wade, Dovin Eagle, Larry the Pan, and Donna Carnes. Alongside our diamond patrons, Bill Roberts, Marcus Connolly, Noah Harley, Michael Cotillasa, Catbite, Charles Tennant, Cindy Klein, Mark J, Luke Flago, Gary, John Colisi, Dwight Phelan, and Stephen Crenenthal. If you would like to be a part of this exciting patron at the of the day, do so by joining our very exciting Patreon page in the description and in the pinned comments down below. I would also like to thank our channel members, Hair Farms One, Catbite, Stephen Fan, and Jeremy Cox as well. This will be located next to that subscribe button down below. Anyway, guys, thank you so much for watching this video. Be sure to smash that like button, leave a comment down below, and subscribe for more weather-related content. I will see you guys in the next video.